afternoon, everybody. Today we are going to present how performance and accountability in health regional planning within health sector in New Zealand. Let's have a quick look at what performance and accountability is and the link within them. Performance management and accountability are closely linked. And performance is always related to accountability. Accountability, on the other hand, is not always related to the performance. Let's see aspects we are inclined to explore to you guys later on. And I'm going to in charge with the information system, which is specific in data collecting and sharing. Public sector performance is a key factor in welfare of individuals of the economy. Demonstration of performance restores and maintenance trust between the public sector, like healthcare and the public. Budgetary consolidation calls for improved priorities and better use of valuable resources. Performance commitments improve accountability and defines relations. And each sector from the graph showing the supply of information and open and informed public disclosure. And the inventory that improve results. Information amassed over time can help an organization to learn uh, what works and does not work and thereby provide variable know-how which can lead to greater efficiency in the production process. It also can help budgeting and decision making. However, experience suggests that how service organizations have difficulty acquiring information for use of any above law roles. The general generally poor quality of current performance information and reporting means that the public sector is not able to demonstrate its achievements and to demonstrate improvements in effectiveness. There are financial and public trust implications in this in ability. And now let's talk about the weaknesses in collecting data. A history of poor execution of information technology projects. Using old and outdated patient management system. Unable to assess information systems and a lack of information connect, and connectedness. From the 2013 annual report, we know that the information system has been improved uh, quite successfully, and which has um, the replacement of the National Health Index with a modern IT platform, use of uh, com comprehensive uh, clinical assessments, by all DHPs for all the people. Greater use of e-referrals in DHPs. Increased uptake of the patient record transfer system. And use of healthcare and information review online. And development of a central region uh, uh, achieve of radiology in matches, replacing the obsolete payment services system with a new payment management system. In line with the obligations under the Operational Policy Framework 2013 and 14, the Ministry of Health will provide six month notice of changes to the national collection system, which are effective as of 1st July 2014 as part of the 2014 National Collection Annual Maintenance Project. And here's the uh, diagram showing that the project time frames. Let's link information system into accounting and finance. It can, it can be uh, observed and measured information, man manage data to improve internal performance management system, to improve its uh, effectiveness and efficiency. And information to external users disclosure what the organization did or does to represent the responsibility to the society and public sector and while allocating assets and making good use of resources 
and investing in well-being projects and liability to achieve better outcomes. Hey guys, my choice was to cover the planning, funding and service delivery of the health sector, mainly the Canterbury District Health Board. So, planning in the health sector usually involves uh, the accountability towards the parliament and the public, uh, which is their main source of funds. Uh, therefore, accountability is veered towards patient uh, orientation and efficiency orientation. Uh, the majority of funding is limited and must be allocated efficiently and effectively. In the case of the health sector, the need for patient orientated resources is high and in order to have sufficient funding, uh, they must become more efficient. For example, they uh, plan to reduce back office costs and increase spending in their frontline care. Uh, the South Island District Health Board plans to increase frontline care and examples include uh, more health care provided at home, in community and primary care settings, uh, clinical networks and multi multidisciplinary alliances, um, secondary and tertiary services to be provided across DHB boundaries and flexible models of care and new technologies to support service delivery in non-traditional uh, non environments from those traditionally recognised. Okay, as said previously, their main source of funds come from government funding and taxes, which is distributed through the Ministry of Health. Uh, the health system's funding comes mainly from vote health, uh, totaling totaling just over 14.6 billion in 2013 and 2014. Uh, other significant funding sources include other government agencies, most notably uh, the Accident Compensation Corporation, ACC, and local government and private sources such as insurance and out-of-pocket payments. As it says from the District Health Board um, website, Disability support services and some health services are funded and purchased nationally by the Ministry of Health. Um, the funds are then used to allocate resources to deliver services. Uh, the DHB chose to use their resources to improve the delivery, the delivery of their services by pooling uh, information technology capacity investing in technology and invest, uh, centralizing buying to replace expensive equipment throughout the region and jointly investing in radiology services, just to name a few. Okay, so now cover the success and barriers to the success. An example of a successful initiative was the pooling of money for bariatric weight loss surgery and each region had to uh, had pulled the money available and had devised jointly agreed criteria to ensure equity of access. Uh, some barriers uh, for funding together involve the DHB prioritizing spending on their local population and the movement of teams to help other, other centers was difficult. This made it hard to implement a regional, fun, regional funding for efficiency gains. In this part of the presentation, we look at performance of the health sector to assess if regional services planning is influencing capital investment. The RCC's or the Regional Capital Committee's aim is to help the DHBs to explore opportunities and priorities for capital investment regionally with the intentions of improving quality. A lot of effort is going into creating organisational and governance approaches to support this planning, but no extra funding has been allocated. Regional discussions have started about which capital projects are worthwhile, but due to outstanding spending priorities, these projects appear to the lack of regional perspective. A big problem with this concept is that the DHBs are left with a lot of older buildings, requiring repairs and upgrades to help them to support modern standards and care. The DHBs from different areas have different priorities, and some have had projects in the pipeline for up to 10 years. 
This combined with new national initiatives, for example new information technologies, place large demands on the DHB's capital funding. Each region will tend to focus on its priorities, but there is also a need to agree with national priorities. This can lead to the DHBs not being able to afford their share of capital needed for all their projects. DHBs finance is limited by the amounts of money given by the government and the limits of the amount they can afford to borrow. There have been some success of joint projects, e.g. the West Coast and Canterbury DHB worked on the proposal of Grey Hospital development. Although on the whole regional collaboration is not finding new ways of delivering services or affecting new or redeveloped buildings. It appears that capital expenditure planning is often discussed before service planning. Capital services appears to be driven from many quarters. Some capital planning is done nationally and some is done locally. Regional services planning is yet another level of planning. The problem is that priorities need to be agreed within the limits of what the DHBs can afford. Few projects have, the approved, have been approved and there has been little connection between regional plans and capital investment. A further committee has been established to advise the Minister on all projects that cost more than $10 million. This is called the CIC or the Capital Investment Committee. National discussion making the national decision making on capital investment has to be regionally linked. The DHBs must prepare an outline of proposals that have a regional perspective for the CIC to consider before it gives consent to prepare a full business plan. This is proving very slow and difficult for the CIC to prioritise spending. Lack of interest from the Ministry in long-term sector plans is making the process even more difficult for the CICs. A major problem with the health sector is the lack of sub suitably qualified people to put together high quality business cases. Key people involved in preparing and approving business cases often lack critical skills to assess and produce business cases. They then have to rely on consultants or advisors often causing duplication of effort. This can lead to poor decisions and a waste of resources. The nationwide lack of people with skills in preparing core business cases combined with the unpredictability of capital funding makes it difficult to run a cost-effective system. DHBs have, buying, DHBs have varying capital needs and little excess cash. Added to this is the inflation that occurs during long time frames required to complete the plan and the small changes added to the original plan that are needed. This makes a very difficult job for the RCCs to achieve their objectives. Okay, so now let's take a look at whether regional services planning is delivering the intended effects. Also, this will serve as a, as a wrap up for what we have just discussed before. So, what are the intended effects? Generally speaking, it is to secure future improvements in clinical and financial sustainability by focusing on the following three parts. Uh, the first one is to make vulnerable services more resilient and uh, as for this part, it is expected that vulnerable services has been identified and that region, uh, regions are setting up sustainable solutions for that. There are several evidence to show that regions are actually working on it right now. So, uh, for example, the Midland region, which uh, recognizes its information technology as being vulnerable. Also, the South Island recognizes the workforce in general as being vulnerable. And this uh, central region is con uh, continuing working on to strengthen its women's uh, health services. However, there is also drawbacks to that. The ministry is giving positive feedbacks to uh, regions that are, do, uh, that are 
setting up sustainable solutions to vulnerable services. However, uh, it does not give any feedback or does not challenge any regions that are silent to this part. So that's really where they need to work on it in order to improve the performance of regional services. The second part is to achieve reductions in cost by services compared with our previous trends. So what is emphasized here is the reduction in the rate of increase. A good amount of saving has been achieved by the HBL Health uh, Benefits Limited, which was set up to work with the health system to achieve savings by reducing administration and uh, support costs such as banking services, insurance, and information technology. Regional shared services also set up uh, also used joint procurement and supply to drive down costs, which did work. However, uh, there is still a lack of cost information. Regional services find it hard to get prompt yeah. data and to properly attribute costs. Um, at the same time, productivity and throughput is increasing as costs increase, so it is really important to find the balancing point. Therefore, accountability is really a big issue here, and to solve which, the best way would be a well-developed information system, which is what the region are currently working on. And the last focus is on, on the improvement of quality of patient care. So, To achieve this, the focus is on the timeliness and equity access to patient care. As for timeliness, we look for, for instance, increases in numbers or percentages of uh, patients receiving timely treatment. The Northern Region Action Plan, for example, has set a target that is 5% off based on the previous uh, achievement. As for the equity of access, there are several initiatives carried out to ensure that, such as the uh, Maternity Quality Initiative and the Better Public Service, which is uh, particularly for vulnerable children. The Ministry also expects to speed up access to services where, again, the lack of good information system makes it harder to figure out the nearest services. Workforce development, uh, getting appropriate funding, and uh, understanding the patient's point of view also needs to be improved. Having said all that, uh, the ministry focus uh, remains on activities instead of uh, outcomes. Although it does take a long time to share results, the biggest problem is that the expected results haven't, have, uh, haven't been defined in a measurable way, whether it's quantitative or qualitative. And that's where, uh, where they really need to work on in order to carry out a better strategy and management for their performance and accountability. Thank you. Okay, so my question was, what priority does the health department have in government funding and do their budgets get cut to fund other departments or is it the other way around? <coughs> funding priorities are found on the Ministry of Health website and it depends on the situation of the DHBs. Uh, the regional health departments plan and then the government will allocate funds <coughs> through the Ministry of Health to the DHBs. Uh, this money is allocated using a weighted population-based funding formula. Uh, risks and needs also must be assessed to develop the health department budgets. An example from the New Zealand Treasury website explains operating deficits and the need for extra funding. Uh, okay, so several, the example is that several district health boards have projected operating deficits in 2011 and 2010 and the government has stated that it does not view projected DHB operating deficits as acceptable and the Ministry of Health is working with the DHBs to develop financial recovery, so find yeah, plans. And the government has set aside funding in Vote Health to meet deficit requirements in 2010 and 2011 anticipating that the DHB deficit position will improve in future years. Okay. My question was, when you collect the data information, how do you eliminate the error data, either caused by mechanical mistakes or misunderstanding? The Ministry of Health is responsible for national collections and surveys of health and disability information. 
this variable information helps us improve the health outcomes of New Zealanders by supporting decision making in policies, development, funding, and at point of care. And also, I suggest each entity has needed to create its own framework for performance reporting and judge which elements like outcomes and outputs within the framework will reflect its nature. The next question is how dependent is the DHBs to government in regards to decision making? The government each year hands out funds to the DHBs along with a list of expectations they expect for the year. When making decisions on a managerial level, they have to ensure that the expectations are met and that they fit within the budget that they are given. The Minister, though, does have complete power to direct the DHB's decisions. Thank you.